Well, hello everybody. Welcome to another Kings at Home Daily. My name's Goff, one of the leaders here at Kings, and uh, my privilege this morning to be spending the next few minutes doing a little study in the book of Acts of the Apostles in the New Testament. We're doing this each day, just a little nugget, 10 minutes to inspire us on our way, hopefully. So, church family, it's good to connect with you in this way. Others looking in, you're most, most welcome. And uh, we're, as I say, we're going through the, the book of Acts. It's, it's really very exciting, the, the sort of birth of the, of the church, the first Jesus followers bursting out onto the streets. Um, it, it's been a tri difficult moment. Jesus has risen from the dead and now he's ascended and there's a bit of bewilderment. How do we do life now? What, 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 what does life look like for us? And they're hidden away in the upper room. And then, wonderfully, the, the, the Holy Spirit comes upon them and empowers them to be followers of Jesus. They burst out onto the streets. And um, that, that's what we've been witnessing in these earlier, earlier chapters. And the first response to, to uh, this joy, this exuberance in these Christians, were well, people around them making the comment in verse 12 of chapter 2 what does this all mean and, and i really like that it's, it's something of you know there should be that testimony of our lives whatever we're going through there should be a little bit something of a testimony in our lives that people get how do you what's going on with you how, how do you do this how do you walk through this the way you're walking through this that there's you know that's uh, there's something special here um well there should be because of course the, the, the life of the risen Christ is in us. The Holy Spirit is in us. And so the first thing we see in verse 12, people asking the question, what does all this mean? Um, but then, something, then Peter preaches. He opens the scriptures. He, going back to the Old Testament, uh, these would be people, that many of them would be, would be Jews, and uh, they would know their Bibles, but they didn't know the key to the Bible. Um, which is Jesus. Do you remember the two disciples on the road to Emmaus? They were bemoaning the fact that, that Jesus had uh, he'd been taken from the grave and they didn't know what had happened. And, and Jesus appeared and walked with them. And it says he, 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 he walked with them and he, and he opened the scriptures to them and helped them see that it all points to, to him, to the Christ. And, and, and so that's what, that's what um, Peter does. He opens the scriptures to them. He he, and he doesn't pull his punches. He, you know, he points out how actually it was, was their sin, that, their rebellion that nailed Jesus to the cross. And, and, and you might think on hearing this, the people would be hugely offended and, uh, and walk away. And yet actually something else happens. They, the, it, it says here, in fact, I better read the passage that I'm speaking from, hadn't I? So I'm reading from chapter 2. And from 30, verse 37, when the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit and the promises for you and your children and all who are far off for all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words, he warned them and pleaded with them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. And those who accepted his message were baptised, and about 3,000 were added to their number in that day. So here, the people, they, they've been challenged by, by, by the word of God. It, it was you who put Jesus on the cross. It, it's down to you. And amazingly they don't get offended but perhaps there were I guess there were some who were offended but many were not offended they were cut to the heart something began to happen in their hearts they they they, they, they recognized that it uh, a bit earlier on it was a question of of, um, of their minds as it were what does all this mean and sometimes in our approach to becoming Christians we, we go through that obviously what does this mean I don't and and there's the the, the logic, the understanding, the exploring, the apologetic. But then, as we continue on that journey, the journey there's a key moment that everyone needs to, to experience if, if they're going to become followers of Jesus. And it's something that goes on in the heart. And it says they were, they were deeply, they were cut to the heart. Um, and, you know, this can sound like a miserable thing. It can sound like a harsh thing, a hard thing. 
and yet actually it's a beautiful moment. What shall we do? That's, it's, it's, it's a pivotal moment. What shall we do? There's a response demanded. What I've learned, what I've, what I've just heard about what Jesus has done for me, what I've just begun to understand about my involvement, the fact that my sin put Jesus on the cross, there, there's this beautiful moment comes where there's a sense of, I need to respond to this. And, uh, it, you know, I, I don't want to rush over this point because it's, it's, such, an import, it's such an important moment. It's, it, it's, a moment of, of actually, it's, it's a moment of the kindness of God. The Apostle Paul in the book of Rome, writing to the Romans, he said, it's the, the kindness of God that leads us to repentance. <laughs> it's, the, it's the kindness of God that opens our eyes. I, we, hey, we, we, love to, we want to c- cover our tracks. We don't like to, to own up to stuff. We, we, we like to, to convince ourselves we're, we're, we're not as bad as others and we're not so bad after all. But, but something's happened here that has opened up their lives b- before God. And perhaps they've caught a glimpse of who, well, they have caught a glimpse of who he is, that he is, 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 is perfect, that, 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 that they are not, that there's, a, that there's a way for them to be, to be saved. That's a good word, isn't it? To be saved. And so what shall we do? And if you've never come to that moment that, where you realise there's a response needed in your life to what you've understood about the gospel, then I would suggest you've, you've not discovered Christianity at all. You may, you may be inquiring and learning, but the key moment is when our heart, we're cut to the heart, something goes on in our hearts and we recognise a response is needed. And um, it's, 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 a precious, it's, it's, it's a pivotal and precious moment for us. And in fact, if we don't go through that moment, you know, it's almost like being, you know, it's, it, it, you, could, you could argue, it, uh, sometimes people have it, something less than a perfect birth. Um, there's many paths to coming to to Christianity. Our anxieties can bring us to a point where we think, I I need I need help. I need I need God in my life. Anxieties, fear of the future, they're all valid things, and they're different things that, that set us on our journey. But unless we come to that moment where where th- that these people came to, wow, I had a part in putting Jesus on the cross. My sin was placed on him unless we come to that moment and follow that with a so what must I do something is demanded of me unless we've come to that point then we perhaps don't know the real heart of Christianity and we risk not having a, a good birth into the into the Christian life Martin Luther of course we we often speak of Martin Luther as being uh, you know the, 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 well, the one who began the reformation uh, understanding justification by faith at a time when the church just put heavy burdens on people. You must do this penance and, and just weighing people down. He, he said, speaking about Isaiah chapter 53, which spoke about he was Jesus being prophesying, Jesus wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. Martin Luther says this, he said, Note the wonderful exchange. One man sins... Another pays the penalty. One deserves peace. The other has it. And he calls, he calls it the wonderful exchange. And that's, the, that's where the Christian life begins. And that's where the Christian life continues. This wonderful exchange. My sin placed on Jesus. I played a part in his going to the cross. His righteousness and peace placed on me. And it's not just where the Christian life begins. It's it, it, hey, we continue in that vein. It's a be- so that's why we 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 can't, we're, we're not going to be spend the rest of our lives condemned or crushed or anything like that. But we've learned the the beauty of the cross, the the liberation of the cross, the wonder of the cross, brings us to repentance. Of course, he says, be baptized. Wonderful picture of of what's happened on the inside. Being baptized, going down in the waters of baptism, being washed. And coming up in newness of life, as it were, dying in the waters, being raised in newness of life. Wonderful picture and demonstration of what it means to be a Christian. And then following on from that, you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Uh, that's the beauty of, uh, of being a Christian. We're, we're, it's not just something that happens in our head. It's something that is sparked in our hearts and it leads to a life transformation. 
Christ in us, the hope of glory. Jesus, the life of the risen Jesus Christ in us, the Holy Spirit in us. And each day we don't we don't move beyond the cross, you know. Oh, I learned that years ago. No, no, no. It's it's, a, it's an ongoing wonderful thing. Whenever we're tempted to feel condemned, crushed, what a wonderful exchange. I sinned. He took the penalty so that I could walk free and know his peace. Well, I hope that's inspired you, helped you. And if you're on your journey, um, I hope that to, to becoming a Christian, I hope this has helped you a little bit. And uh, don't give yourself any rest till you, till you find the pearl of greatest price, knowing Jesus as your saviour. God bless. Have a great day and uh, see you again before too long.